hymn number 666. We have come into this house, gathered in his name to worship him. We have come into this house and gathered in his name to worship him. We have come into his house and gathered in his name to worship Christ the Lord. Worship him, Christ the Lord. Let's forget about ourselves and magnify his name and worship him. Let's forget about ourselves and magnify his name and worship him. Let's forget about ourselves and magnify his name and worship Christ the Lord. Worship him, Christ the Lord. Would you bow with me for a word of prayer? Lord, we just want to thank you, God, for just all the blessings that you have shared with us today. Lord, just thank you for our service this morning. Thank you, God, for every chance that we've had today to study your word. And, Lord, our children's opportunities that they've been afforded to be able to have as a children's church. And, uh, God, just thank you for all of the things. So many times we don't stop to say thank you for letting us experience Father, we tonight we just want to pause and pray for each missionary that we have, and especially those that are in transition to be coming back home. We pray, Lord, that you would help them, Lord, as they move back here to the United States, that you would provide for every need that they have in their life. God, we know you called them, and Lord, we know, God, that you're going to take care of all of those uh, needs that they have as they move back here uh, to the United States. And I just pray, God, that you would be with our leadership in our Southern Baptist Convention. Father, I just pray tonight, Lord, as, uh, as we come into this place, Lord, that we would refocus, retool, re-energize, uh, God, that we would be able to, to receive a word from you, Lord, that we would truly, God, experience you. Help us to just keep the main thing, the main thing, Lord, and that we would be able to, uh, to, be able to reach people, to teach people. God, that we would do the very best that we possibly can to honor you in all that we do. Thank you again, Lord, for every person that's come out tonight. I pray that you would just bless them. Thank you for any guests we may have. Thank you, Lord, that they've come this way tonight. I pray that they would receive a special blessing by being here. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Don't really have a lot of announcements myself. Brock may have a few that he's going to come and share with you. I just uh, would like to remind you about one thing, and that is uh, Wednesday tonight, don't forget, we're going to be starting our spiritual gifts Bible study on the various spiritual gifts. We'll do that Wednesday coming up. So we encourage you to please uh, come be a part of that. If you, There's a couple of the different uh, survey forms that are left here, and we have a lot of people that have gotten those. It's 100 questions. You can go through that. We encourage you to try to do that before Wednesday night so that you will be ready and familiar with all the various spiritual gifts uh, because when you become a child of God, you receive a spiritual gift. It's up to you to locate, find out what that is. That is an indicator to help you to find out what that is and to be able to use that, not just say, well, I know. It's to use that to honor the Lord and to help the kingdom work and the work of the church go forth. And so, Rock, if you will. A few announcements tonight. Uh, Budget and Finance Committee, just a reminder uh, that you will have a meeting after the service tonight. Uh, tonight's your last chance to sign up for our meal this Wednesday at 5.30. If, you're, if you haven't signed up and want to eat with us, please get your name on that list out here by the piano. And then uh, Friday and Saturday, again, the New Hope Christian School will be having a turkey shoot at 6 o'clock both evenings uh, on the 16th and 17th. And then, of course, uh, Pastor Appreciation. I mentioned that this morning, but uh, we'll have reception honoring Brother Tim and his family after our service next Sunday night. We'd love to see you all there for that. This time I'll ask for Cypress Train Report. I'm going to sing a few back to back. We'll start with hymn number 423. You may remain seated. I 
need thee every hour, most gracious Lord. No tender voice like thine can peace afford. I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour I need thee, oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come. I need thee every hour in joy or pain. Come quickly and abide, for life is vain. I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour I need thee, oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come. I need thee every hour, most holy one. Oh, make me thine indeed, thou blessed Son. I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour I need thee, oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come. I lift your name on high, Lord, I sing your praises, I'm so glad you're in my life, I'm so glad you came to save us, you came from heaven to earth to show from the earth to the cross, my debt to pay. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Sing that again. <clears throat> Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. Glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My debt to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in his grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you walking daily by the Savior's side? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest each moment in the crucified? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Lay aside the garments that are stained with sin. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? There's a fountain flowing for the soul unclean. 
the time to worship. Come, now is the time to give your heart. Come, just as you are to worship. Come, just as you are before. One day every tongue will confess you are God. One day every knee will bow. Still the greatest treasure for those who gladly choose you now. Come, now is the time to work. is the time to give your heart. Come, just as you are to worship. Come, just as you are before your God. Come. One day Every tongue will confess you are God. One day every knee will bow. Still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now. Come, just as you are. Come, just as you are. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for letting us get to come here and worship you. Help Brother Tim as he brings this message and bless this offering. In your name I pray. Amen. some out there that always wish that they could come and sing a special, you know, on Sunday morning or Sunday night. Now's your chance. So if you've always wanted to sing or feel like singing or you want to sit in your pew and sing, <clears throat> we're going to do a song I think everybody knows. Uh, it's I Can Only Imagine. So come up front and help me sing if you
y'all for that. I appreciate y'all singing that special tonight. Have you ever got to a place in your life where you lived life seemingly hopeless? At one point in your life, you felt like that there was hope. But something happened along life's way, and you become a hopeless person. And your outlook on life seemed to be very hopeless. This lady in our text, she found herself living a life of hopelessness. Mark chapter 5, and verse 25 through 35. A true story about this lady. Sometimes your circumstances in life can change, and you can live life from in the sunshine to walking through a valley very quickly. You will follow along with me in this passage in Mark chapter 5 and verse 25. A woman who had a hemorrhage for 12 years and had endured much at the hands of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was not helped at all, but rather had grown worse. After hearing about Jesus, she came up in the crowd behind him and touched his cloak, for she thought, if I just touch his garments, I will get well. And immediately the flow of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her, in her body that she was healed of her affliction. And immediately Jesus, perceiving in himself that the power, notice what it said, immediately Jesus, perceiving in himself that the power proceeding from him had gone forth, turned around in the crowd, and he said, Who touched my garments? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in on you, and you say, Who touched me? And he looked around to see the woman who had done this. But the woman, fearing and trembling, aware of what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith hath made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. In our text, we see a woman who had a good reason for having lost all hope in her life. You ever met someone who had lost all hope in their life? You can see the hollowness inside of their eyes, and you can hear it in their voice. If you've known that person's life, you know what they were and then what they've become. So why can we conclude that this woman had lost all hope? Well, the Bible tells us that at one time she had good health. I mean, the Bible tells us that she had lost her good health. And there's a lot of today that seem to be in the same condition. Someone said, sure, I live in the past. It's about the only thing that I have to look forward to. Well, we live in a society that's filled with people. And if you pin those individuals down, and you, they will tell you that their hope has turned into hopelessness. And there's a lot of depressed people, and they're living every single day of their life seemingly with no hope of their life ever getting any better. I like what Claire Booth said years ago. She said that there's, there are no hopeless situations. There are only men who have grown hopeless about them. And this is certainly true for the child of God. I would like to look tonight at hope in three different ways. Hope in three different ways. We want to first of all consider when hope is lost. You know, in Mark 5, and verse 25 and 26 there, in that passage of Scripture, notice, said a certain woman which had an issue of blood for 12 years. This had been a long time. She had to deal with this for quite a while. And so when hope is lost, we can see this so clearly in the life of this sick woman who had come to Jesus there. She had came to Jesus, and this woman knew a great deal about living a life of hopelessness. She had a serious health problem. She had an issue for 12 years, and she had tried several different doctors, physicians. She knew that she needed help. And the Bible says that she steadily grew worse. It can be very frustrating that when you need to get better and you go see all kind of doctors and it seems like nothing is getting you better and different doctors say, well, we will try this and it don't work. And we go to a different doctor and they try that and it does not work. She makes me think of the story of the man who, who goes to his doctor for a complete checkup. And after the checkup, the doctor comes out and the results of the examination and the doctor says, well, I'm afraid that I have some bad news for you. You're dying and you don't have much time to live. And, the, and this man said, well, uh, well, that's terrible. How long do I have? And the doctor says, 10. And then he says, well, 10 what? 10 months? Is it 10 weeks? And the doctor says, 10, 9, 8, 7. Well, you know, this woman, she, it seemingly had a very bad situation. The reason that she grew worse, it could have been for several reasons. We don't know. She may have gone to some bad doctors. You know, this could be the, the case 
because the Bible tells us in verse number 25, it says that she had suffered many things of many physicians. The Bible tells us that she had, was desperate. You know, that seems that they had, it seems they had put her through many medical procedures. And I've met many people, I've pastored a lot of people that have gone through a lot of procedures, and it seemed like that things were just not getting any better. And it seemed like maybe that those things were ineffective. And the Bible says that she steadily grew worse. Bad doctors. There's three people that we've been told to be very careful with, to be very aware of. The first one's undertakers. These folks know that we can't get around them. For, we have to use their service. You know, regardless of what they charge, we have to deal with them. And I believe because we have to have their services, that's why some of them charge such ridiculous prices, because they know. You might say, well, they, they have us over a barrel. We have to deal with them, and they know it. You know, some of these people should be jailed for stealing money like that. You know, the other group of people that we have to be very careful with is doctors. These folks know that we are going to get sick and that we have to have help. And, and so we have no other choice. You have to go to some kind of doctor somewhere. This woman in our text was very desperate for help. For 12 years, the Bible tells us that she went to doctors, some of them which apparently had been bad because it said many physicians in verse 26. She had suffered many things. Notice that word suffered here. How does she suffer because of these physicians? We really do not know exactly, but it might be due to the unnecessary operations that she probably had had. And when Paul Harvey, the radio commentator from yesteryear, from a long time ago, he, when he was living, he told a story there on his radio program that doctors that work for themselves do 50% more surgeries than those who work for a hospital. What do you think that he was trying to say with that? Was, he was implying that 50% of all operations should never take place. You know, just think of this. Some doctors will put a patient on a table, and they won't think twice about cutting him. Uh, you know, and so we have to be very careful with that. And so they'll take the opportunity to, to, to take advantage of people. Uh, someone has said that that is the reason that some of them wear a mask when they're doing surgery. I don't know if that's true or not. I'm just joking. But if you have a good doctor that cares about you, there's one thing that we should do is sit down and write a note of Thanksgiving, especially through a holiday season, and say, thank you for being my doctor. Thank you for being good to me. You know, thank you for all of the concern that you have for my life, for my health. I think that is very important to have that thank you note every now and then. But this is one profession that we know that there's, in every profession, there's probably good and bad. Not only are there undertakers, not only are there bad doctors, but also preachers you have to be very careful with as well. You know, the most obvious are some of those, as we all know, on television. You know, they know that there's people, and they, if you'll send them money, they'll send you a faith seed, and then here we go. It might be that this woman in our text, they, she went to some good physicians, but they probably had done all that they could do. Sometimes doctors do all they can. And we would think that maybe that this was the case. The doctors, they did their very best. And as they tried everything they knew, they, she steadily became worse. Nothing seems to wear on hope like time. Again, she had lost her health. She had lost her money. And now she was living hopelessness. You know, uh, and, and so she was hopeless. She had not always been that way. If we could go back in this lady's life, somewhere in her life, you know, she had a time in her life where she had hope in her heart. That's why uh, the way of life, we can be living uh, one day uh, hopeful and the next day we're hopeless. I don't know if you ever get to a point of being hopeless, you get depressed. We can be on the mountaintop one day, you can be down in the valley the next. You can be rich one day, you can end up being poor the next week. You can be a popular person in town and the very next week you can be one of the most unpopular people. We might be healthy today, but then we can be sick tomorrow. We do not know if this lady was old or not, but yet... She does not appear to be a young woman. And if you could go back into her life, you probably would find that as a young lady, she had high hopes of living a wonderful life. Sometimes your life does not turn out like you want it to be. Sometimes you have plans and you have dreams and it don't, they don't turn out like you want. I'm sure that because she was sick, she didn't get to reach her goals and her dreams and her life. She steadily grew worse and her hope turned into hopelessness. And so we looked at when hope is lost. But then I want you to notice also when hope is lacking, when hope is lacking in our life, you know, what did she do? Well, when, when hope is lacking in our life, we can, we can look at her. What did she do? She, she heard. In verse 27 and 28, when she had heard of Jesus, she came in the press behind him. And notice the Bible says when she had heard of Jesus, hope was gone until she had heard about Jesus. And that gave her new heart, a new, new uh, spring in her life and a new hope in her heart. Romans 10, 17, the Bible tells us that faith comes by hearing. 
Did you know that the more that you expose yourself to the Word of God, the more spiritual that you have a chance of growing, the more that your faith will grow in your life? And this is one of the facts of life, that we are influenced by the things that we are exposing ourselves to. That is why it's so important, very careful, and I'm not saying all music is bad, but we have to be very careful of what we listen to because sometimes the different music that we listen to, sometimes, especially with young people, a life of rebellion or disrespect or sensual living. But if they listen to, to it long enough, soon enough, they're going to be attracted to that evil lifestyle. And so likewise, if people expose themselves to the Word of God, they will grow spiritually. And so she came in contact with Christ. She came in contact with Jesus. She may have heard of the miracles of Christ how that he had healed the ten lepers and how he had opened the eyes of the blind and caused the lame to walk and he raised the dead. And she said, you know, if I could just find my way to Jesus, I believe that I could, he's going to touch my life. He's going to make a difference. And so hope sprang up in her heart when she heard of all of the miracles that he had done. And she probably said to herself, if he can do those mighty things, then I know that he can help me as well. She had heard, but also notice what else she did in her hopeless situation. She had hope. She had hope and acted on that hope when she saw the one that she had heard about. Verse 27 and 28 is where I'm at, if you're following along. In that passage of Scripture, it says there that when she had heard of Jesus, notice she came in the press behind and she touched his garment. For she said, if I may touch his clothing, his cloak, then I will be made whole. Now I want you to notice that word there, that word press. That is the word aklos in the Greek. And, and so it means to, it means a riot. It means a company. It means a multitude. It means a number of people. And so Jesus drew a crowd wherever he went. Today, his popularity is ever before us. 2,000 years have come and gone since Jesus walked the face of this earth. But yet there are songs that are still being written about him. That there's uh, churches that are built all over this world that are worshiping him. The Bible is the best seller that ever was. Literally millions have dedicated their lives to spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so his popularity cannot be equaled by anyone who's ever lived on this earth. But yet she had the faith that if she could squeeze herself through that crowd and touch his garment, that she was going to be made whole. It does not tell us how that she pulled this off, but it does tell us the next that she found help. She found help. Not only did she find hope, but she found some help. Look what happened to this woman that had been living a life of hopelessness. No physician could help her. But the moment that she touched his garment, she found help. In verse 29, and straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up. And yet it says she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. We need to mention that through the centuries since Jesus was on this earth, there's lost men have been coming to Christ in their hopeless situation. And they have sought him out, and yet they made contact, and they were born again. They were cleansed from their desires to sin. Can you, I mean, I don't want you to answer this out loud, but think about your life before you come to know Jesus. There was things that you had to desire to do. There was places that you wanted to go. There was things that were just probably not right. But when you come to know Christ, you still didn't have that same desire, hopefully, in your heart, because your want to had been changed. She came to Jesus for healing. She came to Christ for help. In verse 30 and 31, we, we read of a short conversation. I want to read that to you. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, she, he turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou who touched me? You see, Jesus was well aware of that multitude that was touching him. But he knew that in that crowd there was someone that came to him with hope. And we, we can have a church full of people sitting on these pews at any given time. But on these pews, the same, the same Jesus that knew there was somebody that touched him, he knows this, the needs on every single church pew when we have a worship service. He, he does not have to have someone to touch his cloak now. He knows. And he also knows that there are, they are there because they reached out, if they reach out to him. This woman reached out to Christ that day. But also notice that she was very humble. And verse 33 her hope had been is that if she could just touch him, she would be made whole, and she was. She fell down before him, and she told him all the truth. She probably told him all about the years that had passed and how she had been to these various doctors, and she probably relived those moments and how she had spent all of her money and how she believed that if she could just come and touch him, that she would be made whole. And then naturally, anybody that come in contact with Jesus, more than likely, that brings us to our next point she was happy 
Not only did she find help and hope, but she was happy in verse 34. And she and he said to her daughter, Thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and, and be whole of thy plague. What made her whole? Jesus said, Thy faith hath made thee whole. What is faith? If you, don't want, to, if you want to know the definition of faith in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Every one of us may choose to live in hopelessness or hopefulness. And so the success of our life is highly determined by where we place our hope, our faith. And again, I'd like to remind you of what Claire Booth said. She said, there are no hopeless situations. There are only men who have grown hopeless about them. With as much crime and as much sadness that we have around us today, we have people everywhere that seem like they're living a life that is hopeless. And they need to come in contact with the Savior, just like this lady did. They need to know that there's hope and that they need to know that there's a new life. And it's only through Christ that they will find that hope. So I ask you tonight, are you hopeless? Are you without faith? Or are you hopeful? You are living a life that is full of faith. We need to be like this lady. We need to be hopeful. And we need to know that we need to be, come in contact with the presence of the Lord. Because whomever it was that got into the presence of the Lord, their life was never the same. It was changed. And so it is with us. Tonight, you're either living hopeless or you're living a life of hopefulness. Which one is it for you? I hope you can say tonight that I know who holds tomorrow. And I know who holds my hand. He walks with me through the dark valleys. And it's Christ. Have hope, my friend. And I trust you know Jesus. Let us pray. Father, help us to be people of hope, people of faith, people of trust. And God, that we would trust in you for everything that we have. Lord, that we wouldn't use you like a spare tire, that when we need something, we would just say, okay, God, get out of the trunk. I need to put you on the car and be able to, until I get my flat fixed, and I'm going to put you back where you belong until things get better. Father, we know that there's times in our life that we live in dire straits. Lord, we know that life throws us a curve at times, and we can be, be very similar to this lady. There's so many people in the world, Lord, that's just like this lady, physically hurting, that need hope, but there's also some spiritual sickness, God, across this land, that people need the hope of Jesus Christ, and that they need to come in contact with Christ, that they need the hope that this woman found. And it's only through Jesus Christ that we can have real lasting hope. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you please stand? We're going to offer this invitation for you to come tonight and to, for you to respond. I want to challenge you to make your mind up. You're going to live a life of faith. Without it, you will never please Jesus. Calling today, calling today, why from the sunshine of love wilt thou roam farther and farther away? Calling today, calling today, Jesus is calling his ten. Jesus is calling the weary to rest, calling today, calling today. Bring him thy burden and thou shalt be blessed, he will not turn thee away. Calling today, calling today. Jesus is calling is tenderly calling today I want to thank you for being here tonight I appreciate you coming out and uh, supporting the work of the church do we have any announcements before we go budget meeting immediately following our service tonight don't forget about that if you're on the budget committee any other meetings or anything you remember anybody 
any reminders, anything before we put. Mike? All right, the uh, question was, is the bus going to men's brotherhood meeting tomorrow night? Yes. The bus will be leaving here at the church at 6 o'clock, did you say? Okay, 6 o'clock tomorrow night. It will be leaving here. It will go to Cedar Grove, I believe that's right. And they will be serving uh, supper, so you need to go hungry. And usually Cedar Grove, when they do something, they put a they, they put food out there usually. So they do real well. Brother Todd them does a great job. Um, Mike's countywide brotherhood director, so uh, for sure. Any other word before we go to the house? It's been a good day in the Lord, and I just appreciate your prayers at this time. All right, let's bow for a word of prayer, if you will. We're going to be dismissed, and we're going to go. Father God, be good to us. Thank you for your blessings. God, be with us as we go, that we meet the challenge of tomorrow. Uh, Lord, we know, God, that there's chances to tell people about Christ. And God, I pray that you would help us to just be found faithful, God, truly, that we would do what you called us to do, each one of us. God, I pray you would help us to make a difference. Help us, Lord, to touch lives. I pray that we would be open to be used by you this week. God, help us, Lord, to not get in a rut. Lord, help us to be, uh, have a fresh touch from you. And, Lord, I pray that we would be people that's going to study your word. And, God, that we're going to be people that's going to go home and we're going to pray. And, Lord, we're going to make uh, things right with our maker. God, thank you for these that are guests tonight. Thank you so much that they've come our way. I pray that your blessings be upon them. And, God, I'm praying, Lord, that you would raise up leaders among our church family, God, and that you would help them to be discipled and mentored. And, Lord, they would be ready for the challenge of leading this church when we, Lord, as these who are leading today are no longer on this earth, that they would be able to take up, Lord, and carry on with the work of the Lord here and that New Hope would continue to be a shining light in this community, in this county, in this world. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you all for being here. Appreciate you coming.